Aliens Explored is a podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? In the early hours of the 14th of April, 1561, the skies above the German city of Nuremberg were lit up by what has since been described as an aerial battle of extraterrestrial origin. Objects of all shapes and sizes were seen flying erratically overhead, and a large black triangular object was reported to have crashed and burned outside the city. Join us on Aliens Explored as we investigate the 1561 Nuremberg UFO battle. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Aliens Explored, your weekly podcast where we delve into UFOs, UAPs, alien abductions, strange goings-on, and all manner of weirdness. I'm one of your weird hosts, Stu Jackson. And I'm your... I'm not weird. No. (laughs) What, am I weird? (laughs) I'm your other host, uh, Neil Kelly, and... uh, um, yeah, whether I'm weird or not, I'll let you decide. It's not something I'd, I'd apply to myself. Did you feel like I was leading you down a path? I, I thought I was being led down. A, <laughs> I felt I felt um, obliged to to call myself weird as well. Whereas, um, yeah, I, I don't I don't like to call myself weird. I let other people judge whether they think I'm weird or not because we all have our standards of our, our parameters of normal behaviour and opinion, don't we? We do, we do. And, 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 and we're about to step right outside of it with our latest episode. <laughs> we are indeed. <laughs> I, it, interestingly, I, I'm i proud of being weird. Well, yeah, so it's, you know, who wants to be normal? Yeah, yeah, people laugh at me because I'm not normal and I laugh at them because they are. Well, it's funny, people <laughs> people want their lives to be normal, but they don't want to be seen as normal. They want to be seen as unique. Oh, I wouldn't want a normal life. I mean, oh. I've, I've never been married, I've got no kids, you know, all these things that are expected, certainly of, of people our age group, you know, mm. it's kind of the expected thing, you know, you go and get a, a normal job in a bank and yeah, you, you, you propagate, you know, <laughs> the planet yeah. with more people and you get married. No, I've never, you know, I... I, I can quite happily make a commitment to a partner without a wedding ceremony. I'm not knocking mm. marriage, it's just not for me. Mm. Um, so I've always kind of booked trends in that. Well, that and, and I'd like to say to all our listeners, if, you, if you've been worried that uh, your life isn't normal enough, that you haven't got a, a satisfying career, or that your life isn't going quite the way you, you expected it to, well, actually, there's a lo- it's a lot more down to chance than you realise... And and you're fine. You're fine. Whatever you're doing, you know. Yeah. This is where life has brought you, and um, you didn't actually have much to do with it. No, no. It's more down to. In fact, my my father is one. He's always um, very keen to tell people about how he always made the right choices, and I mean, he did very well for himself. Mm. Very well. You know, retired at forty nine. Um, you know, he's independent, shall we say. Um, you know, he, yeah, he had a very successful career, but yeah, he he will tell people it's because he made the right choice. No, it's because he had the right opportunities. Had the right opportunities, but also I remember being very jealous of a friend of mine who's he's only a few months younger than me, but he was in the year below me at school, and um, he went on a work experience thing when he was in the in the sixth form, you know, the, the upper end mm-hmm. of, of high school for Americans. It's you know, from age about sixteen to eighteen where you do your sort of higher levels he went on a work experience thing and they offered him a job and he stayed in that job for the rest of his working life that that well i mean he he did well he he was promoted up to quite a senior management level but it was the it was actually the metropolitan police so he was their their it direct director of it 
but starting from right. office boy, but went all the way up working in this same job, lived in the same street all his life. And I was very jealous of the fact that he could retire at 55 or whenever it was he retired and, and go and pursue other things. I was jealous of his money, but I think, would I have liked to have had that life, just one job for one of these? Actually, no. No, I'm glad I didn't do that. Although I regret not having the money. Well, there's that. Yeah. There is that. I mean, it would suit some people and... No, I think yeah. you know. For those people, it would suit. Great, go at it. But mm. no, I'm. I'm the same. I could not. I. I crave variety. I crave you know challenges and different things. I. I hate routine. Mind you, I'm a bit older than you. So if someone said to me, "Oh, you've got this job in a, we've we've, we've cast you in a soap opera, and um, if your character tests well, if it proves to be popular, this could be a job for life. Could be the rest of your working life or." In, in half terms could be the rest of your actual biological <laughs> existence on this planet I'd say yeah fine they say well it oh. means you can't go and do movies or, or other theatre or other things like that we might let you out once in a while to do panto at Christmas but yeah <laughs> fine I'm good with that oh no they won't <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah oh no and I'm exactly the same with that but even though you're playing the same character you've still got variety within the role because you've got different challenges that come up within the script that your character would react to mm. so, so even playing the same role there is variety there is you know less of a routine because you might be filming on different days or at different times or with different people mm. it's it's the 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 drudgery for me of going to the same place every day at the same time doing the same things Ooh, it, mm, well no. I, I think this calls for a shout out to to bill roach who's a, a, a soap opera actor, well, I don't know if he's a continuing ser serial, but they call it a continuing drama. Um, he's been in Coronation Street since December 1960, when it was launched, um, playing the part of Ken Barlow. He's still doing it now. Um, so he was doing this uh, before we'd, anyone had heard of the Beatles. Um, some of our listeners may not remember when the Berlin Wall came down. He was doing that before the Berlin Wall went up. Um, mm. Before Kennedy took office as president of the United States, um, you know, <laughs> it's, he's been doing it all that time. Well, shout out. Anyway, J Stu, I, I think we've digressed a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, that is our mo. Uh, yes, yeah. because we haven't even mentioned what we're here to talk about. So why don't you tell the listeners what we're here to talk about this week? We are here to talk about um, a celestial phenomenon. Um, possible UFO dogfight over mm. the city of Nuremberg which um, was recorded in the year 1561 yes indeed it's quite a famous woodcut this one or at least in mm. uh, in ufology circles uh, from a broadsheet uh, by Hans Glazer I mean it's not just a woodcut it's not just a picture he put text with it as well mm. Um, but yeah, Nuremberg, which is, which is quite a, I mean, I guess that's how they wrote in those days. But it's a pretty rambling account, isn't it? It's it, it, it's, it's difficult more to like follow. an opinion piece. It is a little bit. Mm, um, a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun. <laughs> yes, and uh, it's very religious as well. So he goes on. These things are sent by God, and you know this is a sign that you should repent. And, well, those. I mean, yeah, in England, was it? I assume this is during the reign of Elizabeth the first. So, um, I think you know it was. more about your history than me. Yeah, I think it was. I think she'd taken the throne by that time. Henry VIII died in 1547. So, yeah, then there was his son Edward the Sixth. Then there was Bloody Mary. I don't think either of them lasted that long. So, I think by this time we're well into Elizabethan era. So, yeah, their 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 means of recording what they saw was limited it was limited to woodcuts and drawings and and other mm -hmm. which could get quite fanciful um mm -hmm. and uh, when, when they're depicting anything really and of course yes their, their mindset they wouldn't have been thinking in terms of visitors from other planets or other dimensions they would have been thinking of visitors from heaven it would have been a religious thing for them yes yes i mean it, funnily enough that's one of the reasons why i'm always hesitant to describe um what we call extraterrestrials and in fact as extraterrestrials mm. uh as well like this world word otherworldly is because 
we don't know that they are coming from another planet or another dimension or if they're time trap we you know we just don't know we're just describing our current level of understanding of the universe to an unknown phenomena in exactly mm. the same way that they did back in Nuremberg they applied their their level of knowledge their level of understanding to it then and um, what what was their level of understanding of the universe back in 1561 was, was Galileo it's <laughs> It's yeah. God. It's so God. If it's unexplained, if it's weird, it's God. That, so it's they, a miracle. So they wouldn't have understood <laughs> stars as large objects that are a, a long way. Away. Actually, they're so far away that um, many of the stars they're looking at actually no longer exist. They're mm. looking back in time, millions of years. To they wouldn't well, have understood you, that. There was for them, it was fairy lights in the sky, I guess. That's it. Even when you look at the sun, that's looking back in time because that was eight minutes ago. Um, and just a word to our listeners, yes, don't look at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, so this book, like I say, it's, it's quite famous in ufology circles. Mm. Uh, and for our listeners, if you if you Google uh, Nuremberg 1561 uh, UFO woodcut, you, you'll see it. it comes up there's quite a few articles about it mm. um had you seen it before neil or is um, this news to you this is news to me yeah so i wasn't i wasn't aware of this um but it, it does make meet the criteria yeah you, know, you can see why the the u.s department of defense refer to unexplained or is it unexplained or unidentified aerial phenomena uh unidentified unidentified um, rather than a, a UFO, because this mm-hmm. is an aerial phenomenon, isn't it? It's something in the sky that, that got people alarmed, a dreadful apparition. Yeah, and do you know what? Actually, on the UAP thing, I discovered very recently that we've been um, we've been saying it's a new thing. It's it's something they're quite recently doing. Actually, no, it goes back to um, like the 1900s. Uh, that was the official designation was UAPs. It was only the the media that coined the term UFOs. Well, flying saucers was you know, 1940s, wasn't it? When that one as well, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the the term UFOs came out through the media, not through official channels. So hmm. UAPs has been the designation for a long time. <laughs> now, according to the broadsheet that accompanies this this woodcut. Um, residents of Nuremberg saw what they described as an aerial battle followed by the appearance of a large black triangular object and then a mm. large crash outside the city. So that presumes there was some wreckage to be recovered. One would think so. Um, but it, I mean, it starts out before that. Uh, they talk about the sun itself doing some weird things and... Mm. Then they talk about there being a large number of orbs, some of which have these red lines sort mm. of connecting them and making crosses effectively. Mm. Um, orbs, of course, or, or spherical um, UFOs are not uncommon in modern descriptions. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, go back to the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Um, they were described as being orbs. Um, they also talk about cylinders as well. Uh, which again, cylindrical or cigar-shaped UFOs is not uncommon. Hmm. And yeah, as didn't you they right identify them as cannons and cannonballs? That was the the, the the rationale for a battle. These these cylinders were cannons, and these orbs were cannonballs. Well, the, uh, there was nothing that I saw in the actual text of the woodcut itself. I think that's that's how they've been depicted visually in the woodcut. Hmm. According, but if, to, according to the description, the globes flew back and forth among themselves and fought vehemently with each other for over an hour. And when, yeah. the, when the and when the conflict in and again out of the sun was most intense, they became fatigued to such an extent that they all, as said above, fell from the sun down upon the earth as if they all burned. And they then wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. Hmm. That, I mean that's quite a quite a description there, yeah. and uh, as you said, I mean just to go back to the different types of UFO, as you rightly said, there's this large black triangle, which again, yeah, modern UFO we see the Delta UFO a lot, and it's usually black. This could be a modern UFO description Ooh. very easily. 
Um, but yeah, you've got them crashing to the ground, burning up, um, or evaporating, hmm. or perhaps being retrieved by some other method. Well, would they would they have been too frightened? Perhaps it's, they also say this piece also says, although we have seen shortly one after another many kinds of signs on the heaven which are sent to us by the Almighty God to bring us to repentance, we still are unfortunately so ungrateful that we despise such high signs and miracles of God, or we speak of them with ridicule and discard them to the wind in order that God may send us a frightening punishment on our on account of our ungratefulness. After all, the God-fearing will by no means discard these signs, but will take it to heart as a warning of their merciful Father in heaven, will mend their lives and faithfully beg God that he may avert his wrath, including the well-deserved punishment on us, so that we may temporarily here and perpetually there live as his children. For it, may God grant us his help. Amen. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is is they're just describing their understanding of the universe. You know, strange things in the yeah. sky they would see as being... But even then, you know, in the same way that UFOs today, you know, hmm. you say, oh, I so saw UFO, you know, I hmm. think it's like an extraterrestrial or whatever you get laughed at. That was no different back then. You know, hmm. somebody comes out and says, oh, look, it's a sign from God and people laugh at them. Yeah. Um, you know... Uh, it's, it, it reads like if you just replace the whole um, it being a religious thing to being a UFO thing, it could it that could be a description from today. Of course, mm. today you'd have like camera phone footage of it. <laughs> of course, you would, yeah, or even in you know, a still photo back in the, yeah, or cine film or something. But in those days, they they could only record things by remembering what it looked like or, or drawing a picture of what they see. Now, the, people have come up with very, various descriptions of what it might have been. Um, um, some experts have said it was something called a sun dog, which I'd never oh, heard about, or a mock I'm, sun. I'm glad you've raised this one. Um, there are aspects of the description early on when it um, talks about the sun basically having a halo that oh. do in fact describe the effects of a sun dog. A, a sun dog is a parhelion uh, not to be confused with a perihelion mm. uh, but a parhelion is a an optical illusion where you see it's almost like the sun has fiery brackets <laughs> either yeah. side of it um it, it's an interesting optical effect uh what you don't get with a sun dog is lots of orbs lots of cylinders they don't battle it out for hours on end, and you don't get a big black triangle turning up, uh, and you don't get the orbs falling to earth and burning away. That doesn't happen with a sun dog. <laughs> no. So, I, I, I think it is possible that there was a sun dog effect. Now, mm -hmm. perhaps this phenomena, whatever it was, the orbs, the cylinders, and what have you, might have actually caused a sun dog mm. or a parhelion i can i can imagine that happening but i mean to me it's silly to say oh the whole thing's just a sun dog because that doesn't explain orbs falling to earth and burning up in great plumes of smoke mm. um i've heard people say maybe it was a meteor shower uh because you know, yeah, you're seeing sort of round things flying through the sky. You know, you're getting smoke and burning effects. Uh, with the trails of some of them, it could be seen as cylindrical. Oh. But you wouldn't get them battling it out for an hour. No. Um, but, I mean, as, as well as the religious significance, um, the people of, of Nuremberg had undergone various sieges. They 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 undergone a, a siege in 1554 i think there'd been uh yeah there'd been one slightly before that so anything they see in the sky like that you know, fire in the sky they're possibly going to attribute that to some some kind of attack on them well that's the thing it wasn't seen as an attack on them it was seen as a battle between hmm. each other 
but they're all battling be, amongst themselves yeah. just happen to be there or, or someone's having a fight mm. but yeah that'll be the reason why they'd see it as, as a battle because they were quite used to seeing battles they'd been under siege only a few years previously well I would say conversely rather than them just automatically seeing it as a battle mm. they've seen enough battles to know what a battle looks like yeah um so well, they I wouldn't think have that seen makes a ba- them more credible. They wouldn't have seen a battle in the sky, would they? They'd have seen a battle which, which involves things burning on the ground and maybe the odd thing flying, the odd projector, the odd cannonball. But you don't really see a cannonball do you, till it's too late. Well, yeah. Mm. Um, and it's... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy to accept this might not have been an actual battle. Although the orbs falling to the ground and burning up is is quite compelling for that argument hmm. at least for me but the, the there's no evidence that they were recovered and no one went to look and see what had landed there well, at least not recovered by humans but yeah that's I mean there's no we don't have any record of something being of anything being retrieved as far as I can tell If we discovered uh, an island um, with Neanderthal man still living on it, mm. we might go and study. We might even um, have a battle at sea with another country, another superpower over who gets to own this island. Um, all of this might be observed by the inhabitants, by the Neanderthals watching. If the um, if guns or ships were washed up on shore after being destroyed, I think it'd be really important to remove those and retrieve them very, very quickly, lest they impact mm. on the island. So, well, I, I mean, there, there is evidence that modern wars have been fought, and they've they've encroached on areas where where people live quite primitively. And so these primitive people have suddenly seen this this battle, this pitched battle occurring with, with employing technologies they never could have imagined mm. and destructive power they never could have imagined. Well, yeah, but you wouldn't leave it there, would you? Um, no, I mean, you probably understand what was... You might not even understand that it's a battle going on. Mm. It was obviously something that they could... Even though they would never have seen any form of aerial combat before. I mean, they didn't even have balloons. They didn't even come up with the idea of hot air balloons in those days. So, But you might see aerial manoeuvres and misinterpret that as a battle. Like I so, say, I'm, I'm willing mm. to accept, you know, maybe this, maybe this was just like their version of an air show and it just went wrong. Except that they would never have seen an air show. They would never have seen no. even a balloon, or maybe a kite they might have seen. No, I'm, I'm saying, like, for me, you know, that's mm. a possible interpretation. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to accept that this wasn't necessarily a battle. I just... Mm. I'm leaning towards it, but, you know, I'm, I'm open-minded enough to accept that it might have been something else. Well, I, I think um, seeing fire in the sky, given that the, the residents of this city had not so long ago endured a, hit more than one siege... Um, yeah, they would have they would have interpreted that as as possibly a battle. Mm. Well, I think we've um, pretty much exhausted this now. Um, so let's let's do our usual summary of what we think what we think about the uh, the Nuremberg woodcut, Neil. Um. It's it's very interesting. I, I I do believe these people saw something in the sky that was beyond their understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, I do wonder with with all the dots and crosses. I wonder how much it was spots before the eyes, just because they looked at the sun. Um, <laughs> but but these people were yeah they they just because of who they were and at the time they were living and where they were living. Yes, they were they were bound to put a, a religious interpretation on it. Mm-hmm. And they were bound to put a, a military interpretation on it because they'd been under siege in uh, only a short time previously. So, yeah, um, I don't, I don't know. Do you think it was otherworldly though? 
Um, again, I, I don't know. There just isn't enough. I mean, the contemporary accounts are so... I mean, they, they, they said there was a crash landing somewhere beyond the city limits, but no record of them having gone to find the thing that crashed. Mm. So, I'd, the, the, I think the, 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 the story is too incomplete. It is, and of course, with it being up in the sky, uh, we've no idea about how far away these things were. They might have been massive, but... Hmm. So, but, it was between 4 and 5 a.m., in April, so would it have still been dark then in Nuremberg? Uh, well, no, they're talking about the sun, yeah, being present. So it would have been it would have been at dawn, wouldn't it? So mm. I would have thought so maybe it's, it's it had been going on for a while. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it yeah. was only the dawn light that allowed, and of course, people getting up that allowed them to see it. Yeah, I would. Um, I'd, I'd certainly be interested to hear from any of our listeners who can have a. Have some sort of insight into what could cause that kind of aerial phenomenon that could so startle religious non-scientific people <laughs> uh well i'm not religious i'm probably not scientific as either but um i mean for me i find this really really compelling it, it meets so many of the stories we get today from modern UFO accounts, like I say, orbs, cylinders, a big black delta UFO. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I mean, they're talking about these things crashing to earth, burning up lots of smoke. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I find this very, very compelling. Whilst I'm open to the idea that, you know, there might be other explanations of what actually went on, no, I'm I'm convinced this was um, this was definitely otherworldly craft, um, definitely engaged in some sort of manoeuvres, probably having a battle, probably but having a battle. Have we ever? Do we have any other accounts ever of UFOs fighting a battle in our skies? Uh, yes. Um, okay, well, then, okay, so it's, it's not <laughs> unique in, in that respect. But yeah, as you say, it's interesting that this comes from a time before anyone would have been aware of beings on other planets or in other dimensions, and that they're describing the kinds of things that, you know, one of the accusations that's thrown at people who have suffered um, alien abductions or spotted a UFO is, well, this guy's a UFO nut anyway, so he was event eventually bound to come up with something like this. Um, but that you couldn't, you could never throw that accusation at anyone here. No, <laughs> I am going to back up what I, you know, when I said yes. Um, instantly, the one that occurred to me was in 1566. There was uh, and what appeared to be and described as <laughs> uh, celestial phenomena that were said to have fought each other in terms of red and black balls. Uh, that was mm. over base Basel in Switzerland. Mm. Basel? Basel or Baal, depending on uh, Baal. Okay. Uh, whether you're French in, or German. But in Switzerland. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's not unheard of. Perhaps uh, in the these. last, um, during the last 470 odd years, these, these extraterrestrials have kind of made a peace with each other. They don't fight battles anymore. Yeah. Or maybe one side won. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fantastic but what do you think listeners is the Nuremberg woodcut an accurate example of UFOs uh, from our own history or is there another more mundane or perhaps less mundane um, explanation for it do write in and let us know you can get in touch with us in the usual places we're on Facebook and Twitter and you can find those by searching Aliens Explored or you can email us at aliensexplored at gmail.com don't forget to join us next time uh, when we'll be discussing a really interesting case uh, a little bit closer to home although mm. oh my goodness 41 years ago it really doesn't feel like it um, the Cash Landrum incident Whoa. yeah look forward to that absolutely so in the meantime keep watching well the skies 
Because you might see him back or you might. UFOs. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take care for now. Bye bye. Aliens Explored is a Fiegel Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Darren Mafucci and editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Twitter and Facebook by searching Aliens Explored or visit aliensexplored.com. <laughs>